She's a songwriter. Um, she's living the dream out in LA. Um, she is one of the success stories. Uh, her name is Cherish Alexander. Let's bring her on up here. Come on. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. There she is. Do you see me okay? I'm trying to get this. Yeah. Is that good? Okay. You sound great and you look great. Uh, thank you so much. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for having me part of your podcast. I really appreciate um, it. <laughs> we feel honored to have you on the show, but do you want to tell them why you agreed to be on the show or do you want me to tell them? <laughs> Wait, what, do I want to tell them what? <laughs> why you agreed to be on my show or do you want me to tell them? <laughs> I'll let you tell them. <laughs> okay. Um, not only is she a very established singer songwriter, but she happens to be my cousin in law. Um, she's married to my cousin Cliff, who is actually a, another uh, fame story uh, in LA. He is a, a very established artist there. Um, and but this is this is Cherish's show. I'm I'm hoping to get him on the show later, but this is Cherish's show. So, uh, thank you for going to come on the show. We appreciate thank it. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, I'm looking forward to you playing some music for us. Okay. Um, just let me know when I have a few songs prepared. Go for ahead you. and start start playing for us now, and we'll get our questions ready. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. I lost my pick. Grab my Beatles pick. Ah, <laughs> nice. You got a lot of Beatles memorabilia over there. I do. I'm a Both huge you guys Beatles love fan. the Beatles. I, I grew yeah. up on the Beatles. Same here. So I'm going to sing a song. Um, it was my single off of my last album. Um, uh, my last album, Meet Me Where You Are. This is Just Be. If you come, just let it come. If you go, just let it go. If you face, just let it fade. If it stays, just let it stay. If you're a dreamer, then just dream.
Lovely. Um, you have a cross on your guitar there. Uh, very nice one, by the way. Uh, one of our one of our viewers noticed it. And uh, are, are you very religious? I mean, the truth is, I'm, I, I did grow up in a Christian school. I I, um, mm -hmm. I went to Christian school from like fourth grade to twelfth grade. Um, but I would say I'm more spiritual. Than okay. Religious. Okay. Yeah. Um, now you actually started playing very young. Yes. You started playing piano when you were seven? Yes. And uh, you started playing bass when you were about 12 or 13, right? Yes. And so my first piano player, his name was Mr. Gaudio. And um, he was also my vocal coach. And um, the first, when I first started taking singing lessons with him, he wouldn't let me sing for the first six months. I had to do breathing exercises every night. And so my mom would stack a big pile of books on my, on my diaphragm. And I had to go... For six months, he was like, no, you can't sing, you can't sing, because I guess, you know, he was an opera coach, so, like, okay. all of the singing is from, like, your, you know, diaphragm, so, and also piano, yeah, and I actually wrote my first song at age nine with my brother. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Was so was this, a, was this a decision that you made, or was this kind of made for you? Because a lot of parents sometimes put their kids into that situation, and a lot of kids go, yeah, they, they love it, they love it, and some don't, but... Uh, yeah. Was this a decision you made or was it somebody else made that for you? I mean, I think actually my mom saw the strengths that I had, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. you know, looking she sent back, you, the talent. You, know, I, you know, as a 10 year old, you don't want to practice every day, you know, <laughs> I was doing vocal lessons and piano lessons and this lesson and that lesson. But looking back, I'm just so grateful that she did that, you know, because yeah. now I have the tools to express myself uh, through songwriting and stuff like that, so. Cherish, can you tell us uh, about uh, how your career got going with uh, RCA and BMG? So, yeah, so I signed with RCA Records when I was um, 18 years old. Um, I had met a producer um, who uh, signed me and um, proceeded to get me a record deal. I did a few demos. Um, I started, you know, I was writing songs and... Um, he actually, I ended up getting signed with RCA Records to do a dance album at 18 years old. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, so I, I did a whole dance album and they were just about to release it. And I was doing promo and I was in New York and Nashville and taking interview classes and this whole thing. And um, right before they're about to release it, the um, president of RCA Records got fired. And they hired a guy named Joe Galante from Nashville, Tennessee. And so he came in. And literally, like, dropped every one from the label. He was just cleaning house. Oh, man. And, um, but kept me because I had written a few songs that he really liked. So I proceeded to do a second album with all of my own music um, mm -hmm. at 18. And by the time they wanted to release it, that was kind of going into, like, the grunge era. You know, Nirvana oh. and Soundgarden, all, like, Seattle scene was coming out. And um, mm -hmm. I, had, I had already you know, been signed with them for so long that the kind of album I wanted to make, they didn't see um, recouping <laughs> the amount of money they had spent. Mm. So we parted ways. Um, but I was also signed to Warner Chapel Music Publishing. Yeah. And I just, it just really, I just worked with so many incredible songwriters. And really- Yeah, you've worked with a lot of powerhouses in the business. I know, I've, got, I've gotten really lucky. And, and so it's just been a, a, a beautiful, you know, path for me to, you know, express my own music. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Yeah, you played with Cindy Lauper? Yes, yeah, I played um, guitar with her um, in her, two of her music videos. Yeah, and uh, name some of the others. Uh, right now you're working with Josie Cotton, right? 
I'm playing bass with Josie, yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just played the Greek Theater, which was an amazing, fun show we, um, last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we played with, we've played with, you know, a lot of, it, she's from the, she has had hits in the 80s, so we do these 80s events. But we played with like Violent Femmes, Flock of Seagulls, um, Missing Persons. Yeah. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, tell us about uh, some of your accomplishments during the pandemic. I mean, I know that this has affected us all, and we've had to kind of roll with it. As I was talking with Leslie earlier, we tried to kind of roll with this punch. Um, did it really slow you down that much, or um, have you been busy working? I mean, you're obviously. A songwriter. Yes, exactly. So you know, obviously, my heart goes out to everyone that had you know had suffering and and had a hard time and and lost loved ones and all of that. Um, but for me, you know, I just um, yeah, I, you know, I have my studio and it's a way for me to express myself. And you have a studio uh, in your home. Yes, yes. This is my studio, actually. Um, and That's good. Uh, yes. So I just you know I just turned inward really and just you know, tried to figure out what it all meant. I mean, you know, it's it's crazy times and um, trying to see the positive in it. And, I guess the uh, reason I ask this question so many times on this show is because I love to hear other stories of people not letting it knock them down and just stop everything. You know, I, I like to hear people saying, look, I know it's ho a horrible thing that's going on out there and I hate to hear about people dying and, but, I'm doing something, you know, I'm not letting it stop me. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I like to hear those kind of stories. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm sort of a born optimist, you know, I just always have Let been able to see the silver lining and I always look for the silver lining, even in the worst of circumstances. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I do feel like in a crazy way, it's we're in the middle of a miracle, you know, um, and something good is going to come out of it. I really do believe that. Um, and you know, the recluse in me was in complete heaven because <laughs> 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 just kind of got to like tuck in my home and be creative. And well, I know that was that's and... true of my cousin, I wasn't sure that was true of you as well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the yin and the yang thing, you know, <laughs> Maybe it's an thing. I don't know, but <laughs> but I know he definitely likes to stay at home and, and me is do his own thing, yes, yes. Um, so we both were super, super creative during the you know this whole time and even more and you know that's why like coming out of the, coming out of it we have so much to share you know because right. it's just like so we created so much we're just like Wah! you know there you go yeah well uh can i i know that you have a new cd coming out and um, well yeah. i have a new single that i just released i do have a new album that's in the works right now but okay. um, i just released a single and a video that i directed okay um, and conceptualized and um, yeah I spent like a year working on it so it's mm -hmm. been a huge birthing process just getting it out to I the read internet. about how it didn't come quickly that it, it you thought it was going to come quickly but uh, the song so I actually wrote you had to go back to it later and redo it and... well I actually wrote the song in 15 minutes and it was right. during the times of like you know George Floyd and all the horrible stuff happening and the fires mm. and the climate I'm just trying to like understand it in my own way and I went to record it and it just wasn't wasn't what out. you were hoping for. I re-recorded a different tempo, different, you know, instrument, didn't work out. And so I just left it for like six months. Mm -hmm. And then just something kept saying to me, you gotta record this song. So I came back in my studio and I just did it like that. And um, sometimes you gotta step away from a project for a while to get you true. know to, to refocus. To get you it's know true. to refocus. I'm I'm the same way with writing. Sometimes I'll have to step away from something that I've been writing for months. Yeah. Maybe even a year, you know, before I go back to it and go, Okay, now I see what my problem was. Let me let me try this and then you can continue. Yeah, exactly. And you want it to be inspired too, right? You just, just don't want to put stuff out there. Like it, you want it to come from like Sometimes when you're doing place. something over and over and over again, yeah, you get you get foggy in the head, and yeah, you got to right. And then you think, well, maybe it's not all. meant to exactly, and you're like, well, maybe it's not meant to be, or maybe it's the right direction, or maybe I need to focus somewhere else. And and then you just believe like if it's meant to happen, it'll come back, you know, mm -hmm. to you, and then you like recreate mm -hmm. it, and so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, that song's title is Change Can Start with Me. 
Okay, and is it a possible that you can sing that for us tonight? Yes, I can. I actually wrote it on piano, so... Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Believe me, that a change 
show. You, you've got a voice of an angel. Uh, so, <laughs> Thank you. Um, where, where can uh, people find your CDs? Um, so cherishalexander.com is my mm -hmm. whole catalogs there. All the links, all the YouTube, all the videos, all the stuff. It's all there. That's the best so. place to order them. That way you don't yes. have to give a cut to Amazon or somebody else. <laughs> I mean, there's links to Amazon from my website and yeah. like Apple Music and iTunes and, you know, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> so, <laughs> Very good. All the you guys stuff, got your Christmas things. lights up already? I was that? <laughs> What'd teasing. you say? Yeah, so you guys got your Christmas lights up already? I, oh yeah, no, yeah. I'm teasing. Rounds. I'm teasing. They they no, like Christmas I know. lights. It's crazy. I just love Christmas <laughs> lights. I, my whole life. Yeah. And and you like coffee mugs too? Oh, coffee mugs and Christmas lights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and poodles. They, oh yeah, yeah. And I got the poodles, yeah. <laughs> who who has been the most supportive for you in your career? Oh my gosh, you know, sounds so cliche, but my mom, you know, yeah. my mom has just been my like number one cheerleader. Um, she's just always believed in me and, mm -hmm. you know, she's my mom. <laughs> she's the best. <laughs> um, well, that's great. Yeah, it's good so. to have your parents support. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> it, it, it took me a long time to get my parents to support my acting, uh, which led to comedy later. Uh -huh. Well, this is a great role for you. I, I really actually like you in this role. I, ah. I do. I think you're a great interviewer. You're doing awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you're you so much. You're doing such a good job. We're, yes. we're getting a lot of good feedback for the show. That's for sure. That's so great. And we're getting better and better guests on because uh, they're, the word is getting out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm happy for you guys. Um, you have some songs coming up in TVs and movies, right? Yeah, so I have, um, I just, my, the first song I sang, Just Be, is going to be in a movie called Oro Arrowhead. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, I think, going to be on Amazon Prime. Okay. Um, and um, I, I have a song called God Everywhere off my last album. Um, okay. It sounds very religious, but it's really more spiritual. It's about, you know, just seeing God in everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, just creation, you know? Um, and, I always did um, Clint again. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually going to be um, the theme song on a, on a show on Catholic TV Network. Um, it's Yeah, so that's kind of a big thing. And, um, yeah, I just had a song in a homeless documentary about the uh, homeless in Los Angeles. Is this something you're hoping to branch out more into? Like uh... I think for me, I you know, really the next stage for me is songwriting. I mean, I've, uh, that's my passion is songwriting. I mean, Danny Elfman started out with Oingo Boingo, and now he's one of the biggest composers in Hollywood, you know. Yes. Uh, since Pee Wee's Big uh, big Adventure, he just shot off as a composer. You know, he found out that, hey, I'm better at this, actually, you know. I think that definitely, you know, I think if I were to say my intentions, it's to touch people through music, you know, mm -hmm. write music that makes a difference, and um, mm -hmm. also to be more involved in songwriting for maybe other artists, for TV shows, film. That's my passion. Um, I, you know, I've been in front of the scenes a long time as an artist, and I will always <laughs> consider myself an artist, but I yeah. think for me, I do want to do more of like the writing, you know? Okay. Um, that's my goal. That's my next path. I'm going like this. I'm going and that's like my next question, because we have a lot of people who are in, in music, especially in Atlanta and, and in oh, the yeah. South here, that watch the show. and. Oh, I know they're going to want me to ask you, what is your process for songwriting? This is a question that I have to ask all the songwriters that come on the show. <laughs> um, so songwriting for me is like a very visceral process. Um, I, it's just something that I've mastered. I, I don't know if it was something I, I kind of was born with. Um, you know, I've never taken a songwriting class or anything like that. I have worked with a lot of masters, and so I very, was very lucky to learn th that art through them. Um, but for me, you know, it's it's really just kind of grabbing my guitar, sitting at the piano, and just kind of letting the force flow through me. I mean, sometimes I'll have a lyric idea, and I'll take that. Um, sometimes I'll just be like, na 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 you know, just kind of singing something. Um, then I'll go back and listen to it. I'm like, oh, that's like a line right there. You know, you just kind of sing something, um, you know, organically. Um, but, yeah, so that's... I don't know if that makes sense to people, the visceral process. It's just kind of tuning in. and. It and sounds like it makes sense to me, and I'm yeah, not, okay, not really a songwriter all that much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've no, heard a couple I know. Of song it's, parodies, it's so hard but... to explain the process because it really is such a sacred process. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like, it's, it's also not something, um, 
I can force, you know, like mm -hmm. if I force it, it just never is right. But when I feel the inspiration of it and I sit down, I just write it in like 15 minutes. It's just like that. Like the song, like the song I just um, sang, I, I wrote very quickly. So, All right. Awesome. <laughs> um, are there any, you, 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 did you say you have a, a, a gig coming up soon that we can, that people out in LA can catch you at? Um, you know, I, I, um, I was supposed to be going on tour with Josie Cotton um, okay. at the East Coast, and I unfortunately had to bow out because my doggy is not doing so well. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, to hear. Oops, but I think I am going to be doing like a Facebook Live concert, mm -hmm. um, Instagram Live thing in the next few weeks. Oh, okay. Um, so I'll be promoting that. So maybe you could pass it around if anyone's interested and wants to log in. and Go and follow Cherish Alexander on Instagram and uh, Facebook and as well as Leslie Rodriguez. I don't think Leslie has a, uh, let's bring Leslie back up here. I'm going to do the, do something I haven't done before and bring both the guests back up together to talk. Hi Leslie. Uh, Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. Leslie, you're on Instagram, but I don't think you have, do you have a Facebook? No, I have a Insta, no. I really just Insta and Clubhouse and I'm pretty much live on Clubhouse so you can find me yeah. there. Um, That's cool. a lot of I've never even do. heard of that before. Yeah, you should get in there. Yeah, it's really um, you'll common. meet a lot of people. You meet a lot of people. I just I just signed up for TikTok, and I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm like, what? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's I'm a whole different can of worms. Case, I should. I'm starting <laughs> to hate TikTok now because people are creating these videos where you watch the videos for like three and four minutes to see what's going to happen at the end, and then it's like they give you something lousy at the end. It's like, oh my god, that's five minutes. I'll never I'm get back. TikTok. That's what you're like. I'm quitting it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just created my own TikTok and I, I put my chorus on there and I, mm -hmm. uh, my friend who's really well versed with it, he's like, have people duet with your song and yeah, yeah. so I there's put a, a few takes on there. There there's is, a really there's a lot of viewership. cool thing where people will like do different parts of songs and they're like yeah. in completely different locations they've never met, they've never coordinated and it's beautiful. Yeah, so I, I literally, I put um, from my video, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's like a million different takes and so I just put them up all and I was like, duet this, duet that, you know. Just trying to get the message out there, you yeah. know. So I love that. But TikTok so, is crazy. <laughs> it is. It I'm is. You, you got to deal with the cray cray to get to the viewership. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> so is so there?